It's Halloween Havoc 1992. It takes place October 25th in front of about 7,000 fans at the Philadelphia Civic Center. Uh, We know how you feel about your run in this match now, but as the night began, would you say that you were feeling excited or optimistic about it? I was still excited at the time because I hadn't got the hammer put on my head yet, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it was coming and coming quick. (laughs) It certainly was, and it's about halfway through this event is when Sting comes out and he spins the wheel. And, you know, Jake, the fact that WCW drew 7,000 fans and some incredible pay-per-view buys is remarkable given the fact that we didn't even know which match you guys were having yet, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bill Bill fucked up a lot of stuff along the way, that's for sure. But, I mean, that uh, mini-movie, I don't know if it was his idea, but whoever it was, Stroke of Genius, because it drew a lot of folks. Yeah, it did. Um, the wheel, of course, lands on coal miner's glove and the match is set. Jake, uh, you know, we, we've touched on it a few times, but let's just state it now for the record. Did you know what match stipulation it would nope. be ahead of the match? Nope. So that wheel was not gimmicked. Not gimmicked, brother. <laughs> I mean, Fucking brilliant, right? Hard to wrap your head around that kind of logic no. out of WCW or Watts for that matter. Like, yeah, just whatever happens, we're... We'll be fine. (laughs) My God, just absurd. And of the options available, though, Jake, uh, did any of them stand out as a best-case scenario for you? A cage match would have been fine for me, you know. Mm -hmm. I could have done a lot more in a cage match than I could have done with what we got. Just uh, the pole. I can't climb no pole. (laughs) Snakes don't climb poles. It ain't happening. (laughs) <laughs> but right there, it takes away, takes away the mystery and, the, and the, the anticipation of me getting halfway up there and sliding back down. No, I can't do it. Uh, I mean, I assume you're backstage in the locker room when all this is going down. Like, when you hear, like, hey, by the way, it's a coal miner's glove match. Are you just like, like fuck? What the fuck are we doing? Fuck, are you serious? I mean, so many great <laughs> options. There was, a, there was a bull rope match on there. That would have been fantastic. Yeah, bull rope would have been unbelievable. Uh, by the way, there's one on there that I had to look up because I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. They called it a Prince of Darkness match. It's a blindfold match. Yeah. And it's okay. Jake was in a blindfold match at, at I WrestleMania. Can do that. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, hey, let's uh, let's uh, do the one that does not fit at all. I mean, I, I know it was just luck. The wheel just happened to land on it. But like, come yeah. on, guys. Let's have a little yeah. pre-planning. Um, well, we've got a short clip from the match itself. It's a coal miners glove match, of course, after a hell of a buildup between you and Sting. Let's have a look. And Roberts is going up. The race is on. Roberts is going to have trouble maintaining his balance with just one good arm. And Sting over to grab the leg, pulls him back down, and Jake catches Sting in the face with the elbow. So uh, the coal miner's glove, all that build up, and they're like, okay, yeah. this is the most dangerous weapon, you know, uh, and then he, like, hits you in the back. But that damn snake, you're too focused on that thing because it's not cooperating with you. No, it wasn't. It was a bad snake. Oh, boy. I, but and it what, did bite me in the face, so. So it looked like you were trying to get him to bite you? or yeah, what, it was. Did, okay. So I didn't <laughs> know if you were just trying to make it look like you were, uh, like he, he got you, but you actually yeah. wanted him to bite you. Yeah. I wanted him to bite me and hang on so I could let go of it and just shake my head and the snake would be, you know. 
Now that would have been a hell of a visual. Yeah, but it wouldn't cooperate. Uh, afterwards, that that wound from the snake. I mean, is uh, yeah. what's it like getting bit by a cobra, Jake? I don't think most of us will ever know. Ah, it's like fucking shaving scratch. Really? Oh yeah, it didn't hurt. Wow. No. All right. You'd think that they could really sink in and get you back. No, no, it didn't hurt at all, man. Well, I mean, disappointing match stipulation, and uh, it is funny, too, watching you with the snake, because you bring him up, and it's almost like you look at him like, hey, what the fuck, and then you bring him back, and then he gets you. you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was kind of bad. All right. Well, I mean, what could you do? Oh, You're trying, uh, to, trying to sell they this They wouldn't thing? cooperate, man. Right. What are you going to do? When your snake won't work, <laughs> we've all we've all been there. We need blue chips. Uh, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> um, a disappointing match stipulation ruins what could have been a pretty fun blow off between you and the Stinger. Which brings yeah. me to a fan question from Peter D. Uh, Hi, Jake. After a match that goes bad like this, do you go back to the hotel room and spend the night agonizing over what could? Oh, have been? absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Oh God, yeah, yeah. I know. I was sick after the match. I was so disappointed in myself that uh, I hadn't brought enough or brought the right attitude or brought something that could have made it better. Mm. You know, uh, I know Sting worked hard, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I failed to show up basically. A lot of it I had to do with the, the fucking stipulation. I just couldn't get my head around what the fuck am I doing? Right. Uh, so, well, and I mean, them springing something on you like that, I mean, that's such bullshit to put a wrestler in that position. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. Know, especially, especially for a show where it's like, okay, we, we're getting all these buys. We've invested all this money. We've got yeah. 7,000 people that are showing up to Philly. Let's just fucking wing it. Like, what are we talking about here? It's yeah, so ridiculous. Yeah. It could have been so much fucking better. Could have been so much fucking better. Now, benefit of hindsight, Jake, looking back on it, let's say that you're stuck with the coal miners glove match, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, is there anything off the top of your head that you think you could have done differently or better in that match? Well, I could have been in better shape. That wouldn't have hurt. Ah, okay. You know, uh, I think I was getting a little heavy, and uh, which is no excuse, but it's the truth. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I was struggling with my addiction. You know? Yes. And uh, that's probably a lot of it, too. But I'm not going to look back at that real hard right now because I just don't want to be in a bad mood. I don't blame you. And, you know, by the way, it's a, a big of you to put a lot of the blame on yourself. And well, uh, but however, I, there's plenty of blame to go around there. I think I think a lot oh, of yeah. people deserve it. Oh, yeah. Now, Bill Watts deserves dump two scoops anyway. Oh, that no good cock sucking motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucking fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I stole your line, so you had to call me. I know, man. Shit. 